we're going to discuss the grasshopper problem today. We're modeling quadratics. We're talking about a grasshopper jumping. A grasshopper can jump incredible distances up to 20 times its length. The height in inches of the jump above the ground of a 1 inch grasshopper is given by h of x equals negative 1 20th times x squared plus x plus 3 where x is the horizontal distance in inches. First thing we're going to do is sketch a, gra a diagram without numbers and provide key characteristics of the graph. So we're going to take this. Anything that flies through the air flies in a parabolic path. So we have this path of our grasshopper. We have the ground. And we have the x, the y-axis. The This is horizontal distance. is our x-axis, and vertical distance, or height, is our y-axis. We have over here an x-intercept. We have here a y-intercept. And up here, we have a vertex which also shows us a maximum height. And th this x-intercept looks like it's going to show us our um, vertical or our horizontal distance that was jumped. The next thing we're asked to do is find the vertex without a calculator and interpret the meaning of the quartet. Uh, coordinates in context. So to find the vertex in um, standard form, the formula is negative b over 2a. Our a is negative 1 over 20, our b is 1, and our c is 3. So that's negative 1 divided by 2 times negative 1 over 20 which is negative 1 divided by negative 1 over 10. And following our fraction rules, to divide a fraction, this means negative 1 divided by negative 1 tenth, which is negative 1 multiplied by the reciprocal, negative 10 over 1, which is positive 10. So the x value of our vertex is 10. And then I can plug that in negative 1 over 20 times 10 squared plus 10 plus 3 negative 1 over 20 times 100 remember we have to square it first and then multiply by the number in front plus we'll add those together real quick 13 and negative 1 20th times 100 is negative 5 plus 13, so y equals 8. So our vertex is 10, 8. So when we look back at our parabola, this vertex of 10, 8 represents how far he is horizontally when he reaches the max height. So to interpret this, we're going to say the grasshopper is 10 inches from his starting point when he reaches a maximum height of 8 inches off the ground. And that is how we interpret the meaning of the coordinates in context.
The grasshopper is 10 inches from his starting point. That explains the x value of the vertex when he reaches a maximum height of 8 inches off the ground. Now this word maximum is so important in this particular description because there's something special about that point. It's not just 10, 8. It's not any point on the, mac on the graph. It's the maximum point, the vertex. So therefore we need to make sure we talk about the fact that it is a maximum when we um, interpret the meaning in context. In context means talking about the grasshopper, talking about distances and the uh, inches. That's what context means. So at one point, the coordinates on the pathway of the jump is 2, 4.8. So somewhere along there, we'll say this point here, 2, 4.8. Interpret the meaning of these coordinates. And again, oops, this means the grasshopper, or let's say when the grasshopper is two inches from his starting point, He is 4.8 inches off the ground. This point is not ma maximum, it's not special, it's just a point on the graph. So we can just say that when the grasshopper is 2 inches from his starting point, he is 4.8 uh, inches off the ground. The next thing we're asked to do is interpret what it would mean in context of x equals 0. So let's think about our graph. We'll draw a little one here. When x is 0, what does that mean in context? Well, what's the beginning? Has the grasshopper jumped yet at this point? No. So this means over here, this point here, is the starting point. That's what it means in context. When x equals 0, the grasshopper has not jumped yet. It is his starting point. He has not moved any horizontal distance, therefore that's his starting point. Now the question is, did the grasshopper jump from the ground? And how can we figure that out? And how do we know that? Well, you'll notice that my graphs don't start at 0, 0. And the reason is, my equation is negative 1 20th x squared plus x plus 3. And when x equals 0, the y is equal to 3, the c. So that means he started 3 inches above the ground. So no, the grasshopper uh, jumped from three inches above the ground. How is that possible? Well, maybe he was on a rock. Maybe he was on a leaf. We don't know exactly, but we know that he was not on the ground when he jumped in the beginning. So we can say that this here is 3. Uh, the next question, what would it mean if h of x equals 0? And let's remember that h of x is the y. So that would be over here. 
That's when h of x is equal to 0, when he hits the x-axis again. Remember, the most important thing is the x-axis is actually the ground. You want to think of these problems in context, in reality. So what would it mean when h of x equals 0? He lands. He landed. The grasshopper landed when x, h of x equals 0 because he didn't start on the ground. How high off the ground was the grasshopper when it is these distances? We can use a calculator to do this. Um, how high off the ground is the grasshopper when it is 5 inches from where he started? Remember that the x values is this horizontal distance from the starting point, so we're just plugging in 5 for x. So we get negative 1 20th times 5 squared plus 5 plus 3, which is negative 1 20th times 25 plus 8, which is negative 25 over 20. That reduces to negative 5 fourths, which is negative 1.25 plus 8, so that is 6.75. What does that mean? When the grasshopper is 5 inches from where he started, he is 6.75 inches above the ground. What about 14 inches? Plug in 14, negative 1 over 20 times 14 squared plus 14 plus 3. It's negative 1 over 20 times 196 plus 17. Um, 196 divided by 20 is going to give me, I'm using my calculator, 9.8, so negative 9.8 plus 17, which is 7.2 inches. And then when he's 20 inches from the ground, where did he start? Negative 1 over, how high up is he? Times 20 squared plus 20 plus 3, which is negative 1 over 20 times 400 plus 23, which is negative 20 plus 23. So that equals 3. Now the question, can this be done without a calculator? And I challenge that it could be have, could have been done without a calculator. So what we know about this grasshopper is that he started three inches above the ground. And he jumped and he landed. Well, we also know that a grasshopper is capable of jumping 20 times his length. So if he's a one-inch grasshopper, he could jump 20 inches and he would be at the same height that he started from. So the reason he actually doesn't land at 20 inches is because he started higher off the ground, so he has a little bit more room to fall. So this point actually will be 3 out there. So that could have been done without a calculator. Now, number 8 says to resketch the graph with different information with more valid points. So we have those three points. We have our vertex 10, 8. And we have the point, that's 10 fives halfway, 5, 6.75, and 14, 7.2. It's not very accurate because I don't have graph paper. But with graph paper, we could have drawn a really nice parabola. And that would have been number eight. Oh, no, this is number eight. Huh. I think that was number nine then. Using a calculator, estimate how far the grasshopper was able to jump where it started. This was intended for you to put this graph into Desmos and find where he landed. And remember that where he landed is... Um, you know, when he hits the x-axis again. So over here is where he lands, 22.649. So he lands at 
He lands 22.65 inches from his starting point. We really want you to get into the habit of writing your answers in context and in, um, in sentences. What's the domain and range of the grasshopper's pathway? Well, if you think back to the last graph, started at starting point was at zero on the X and 22.65 on the Y, or, or 22.65 was where he landed. Your vertex was 10, eight. So your domain My domain is curly brace. Let the curly brace go. There it is. Curly brace X such that zero is less than or equal to, I'll fix that in a second, x. And where does the end? Less than or equal to 22.65. Curly breaks. And then the range is y such that y zero is goes from zero to eight less than y less than eight curly brace and it's less than or equal to so I'll add those little lines on there bummer of not having a math keyboard but our domain starts at zero and ends at the 22.65 our range starts at zero and ends at the eight so then the next question is where is it ascending going up so it goes up from zero to ten he's not starting from the depths of the earth he's not going back into the depths of the earth and at his starting point, he's not ascending. So this is where we, we talk about the x values in which he's ascending and descending, and that's in terms of the um, axis of symmetry there at 10. So he's ascending from 0, and this one is not going to be less than. We'll, we'll write ascending. from zero less than x less than 10 and so that is from his starting point till he reaches his max height 10 inches from his starting point. The sentence is so important. It shows us that you understand the context of the problem, what you're talking about. And he's descending between 10 and 22 point six five right so he's descending on the last part of the second half and that is from his max height 10 inches
from where he started. he lands at 22.65 inches from his starting point. So again, we'll look at that. He's descending here from 10 to 22.65. Those are the x values in which his y value is descending. And he's ascending, ascending here from 0 to 10.8. So it's important in this case to make it an interval and not just a less than or, or equal to statement because it, it's not continuous. So number 12 asks, on a tw second jump the grasshopper, so after he jumps from this rock, he lands and then he jumps again. Uh, he's set on the ground to start the jump. This means the original function is shifted down three units. Write the new quadratic equation. So the new quadratic equation, we'll, I'll label it g of x from the ground, negative 1 20th x squared plus x. And everything is a vertical translation down. 3, so we subtracted 3 from the original equation, we'll put it at plus 0. So if we sketch a diagram of the new pathway, now his point of starting is at 0, 0. Here is his vertex. There's our x-intercepts. And we could probably get a lot of this information uh, and fill it in just by translating all the information from the last graph down three. Talk about that some more. What is the highest the grasshopper was from the ground? So I could use negative b over 2a and plug it in and find that x is still 10 because I didn't change the original equation. The only thing I did was change c, and c doesn't affect the x value of the vertex. So x is still 10. And if the point was 10 comma 8, and we did a vertical translation down 3, what's my new vertex? 10 comma 5. You can verify that by plugging it into the equation if you'd like. So my new vertex is at 10 comma 5. Five, because that's a translation down 3 from 10 comma 8. So the highest the grasshopper was from the ground is 5 inches. Oh, that's very ugly. Let me fix that. Interpret the x-intercepts of this graph. So this intercept is his starting point. And that intercept is his ending point. It's not very, um, it's not really complicated. It's not, we're not trying to trick you. We're just trying to help you understand. So the first intercept, um, let me actually type x-intercept in there because there's a different difference. So the first in x-intercept is his starting point. The second x-intercept is where he lands. Is where he lands. So how far did the grasshopper jump when it landed on the ground from where it started? Do I need a calculator for this? No, I don't, because if, remember, it says 20 times its length in the very beginning, and he jumped from the ground. So how far did he jump? 20 inches, right? We also had a point 20, comma 3 on the last graph because we knew he jumped 20 inches. We lower that down 3, and we get 20, comma 0. So he jumped 20 inches from where he started. And 
and we didn't need a calculator to figure that out. What is the domain and range? Again, um, the domain is x such that 0 is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 20 this time. And the range is y such that 0 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 5, which is which was his max height. So again, we'll look at the graph. Here's our axis of symmetry at 10. The ascending didn't change. He's ascending once again from 0 to 10. And he's descending from 10 to 20. And then we can write out in words from starting point till he is 10 inches away at his max height and descending from his max height 10 inches away till he lands. Until he lands uh, 20 inches from start. That's a really bad H. Okay, so that is the grasshopper problem for you. I hope this helps you out.